I'm having a conversation with uh, Professor Tyagarajan. Um, where did you study your undergraduate? At uh, IIT Madras. Okay. I graduated in 70. Mm -hmm. uh, 65 to 70, I was there. Did you do computer science, mechanical? Not at all. Computer science didn't exist as an undergraduate yes. uh, program yes. in those days yes. in India. So I did it in uh, electronics. Okay. It used to be called electrical engineering program. Yes. 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 And so I did that, uh, but it was clear to me that I was interested in uh, computer science. So I went to Rice University, Houston, Texas, for okay. my PhD, uh -huh. and switched to computer science during my PhD studies. And and they did have a proper computer science. Not at all. My the computer science department on uh, in Rice, which is a very good one now, that came much later. Okay. It was still part of uh, electrical engineering. Okay. But they were a group of faculty doing computer science. Okay. So I worked with one of them and uh, yeah. took courses in computer science yeah. mainly and did my PhD there. You p p finished your PhD in three years. How did you manage that? Uh, I found a very nice and very new uh, area. It's now called Pectinets, which is very well known. As a what, what, what is it? It's a mathematical model for distributed computing systems. Okay. And uh, we used it mainly for uh, designing hardware circuits in those days. Okay. But it has grown and grown and grown because distributed computing didn't exist at that time. Yes. But then it has become a major, you know, uh -huh. mathematical uh -huh. model among other models. But did you do your uh, uh, PhD on theoretical computing? Uh, very much so. It was okay. uh, fairly theoretical, even though my advisor was interested in designing. Uh -huh. Uh, so-called asynchronous hardware circuits. Uh -huh. That was his main motivation. Okay. So, uh, and I was interested in that. Yeah. You know, I dealt with that as yeah. part of my research. Uh -huh. And then when I finished, uh, there was um, Jack Dennis at MIT, mm -hmm. who was very interested in designing uh, 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 machines based on this principle, principles okay. of distributed computing. And so he was interested in supporting research in uh, machinets. Okay. So I went and spent uh, two years with him as a postdoc. I see. After I finished my PhD. And then you came back to India? Not at all. I, I thought I would uh, uh, go to Germany and work with Petri himself for a year. <laughs> okay. Where I had got to know him and I was very intrigued by his ideas. Mm -hmm. And it seemed uh, really far ahead of uh, times. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I thought it would be nice to go and spend a year in, G you know, in uh, Germany mm -hmm. before uh, coming back to the States. To was he at Karlsruhe at that time? You know, he was always at uh, a research institute near Bonn okay. called the GMD, okay. Gesellschaft für Mathematik und Datenverarbeitung, okay. set up by the German government. It is sort of uh, the equivalent of INRIA or you know, okay. uh, similar institution. So I went for a year, but I ended up spending eight years in Germany. <laughs> so uh, during that time, I had also decided that I would uh, like to come back to India. Mm -hmm. Instead of going back to the States mm -hmm. or you know, Canada yeah, yeah. to pursue an academic career. And so I, but then I realized I had spent all my time in a research institute and I would uh, need to pick up some teaching. You know, okay. So I, I had very good friends in uh, this uh, Danish university in Aarhus uh -huh. called Aarhus University. Yeah, yes. So I went and spent three years there. Uh -huh. And, but during the time, I kept coming to India fairly regularly to okay. look around and see you know, what I could do. Okay. And uh, I looked at the various IITs and also TAFR. You know? mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, Sishabri had just moved to Chennai uh -huh. and my family is in Chennai. So during uh -huh. one of those visits, I went and dropped in and said hello to Sishabri. Mm -hmm. And we got along very well. Mm -hmm. was very but you didn't know him personally before? At all, no. I see. Somebody said, you know, when I was exploring possibilities at yes. JFR, uh -huh. uh, somebody said, look, why don't you also go and talk to Sishatri, who has just moved to Math Science at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I met him and uh, he was very enthusiastic, he was very welcoming. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, so I decided to come on a sabbatical mm -hmm. from office and spend six months a year, you know. And uh, so even though it looked very, very unpromising because there was no computer science. Right. And it was an institute in transition, you know? Yes. Uh, I thought I would take a chance, and, you know, because okay. Sishabri was uh, very welcoming and we got yeah. along. We had yeah. very similar ideas about many things. Somebody told me that Sishadri always knows when he sees a talent, he knows how to get that talent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, as I said, it was very... Uh, intriguing. No, mm -hmm. I said, uh, why, TAFR was very clear what was going to happen mm -hmm. if I went there. No? Yeah. And uh, whereas here it was, I could start, there were constraints. No? Yes. Whereas here I could start from scratch. Yes. And I but you could build it in your own image. Exactly. 
and uh, and with Sishadri support because I didn't want to start a computer science group on my own. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. I didn't know the terrain at all at all. Yeah. Yeah. And Sishadri, it was very clear. He was liked, respected. No. Yeah. And given a stature, I thought I would just sort of, you know, uh, uh, join him and try to build it. So how did the uh, Spic Institute become a? That came later. So mm -hmm. after a couple of years at. Uh, uh, the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, mm -hmm. Math Science, it used yep. to be called in those yep. days. There was some trouble because we had a uh, sort of a uh, uh, absentee director, oh, Professor yes. Sudarshan. Yes. There was some trouble, and then fortunately it got settled. You know, uh -huh. there was some unpleasantness, but fortunately uh, the matter was settled. Yes. But both Sushadri and I, we had started talking, and uh, we had agreed that uh, this uh, research institute was completely divorced from teaching. And teaching institutions more or less divorced completely from yes. the It's a very bad idea. You know? <laughs> and India suffers enormously from this. True. And so teaching at the master's level or graduate level is fine, but what is really important is to teach at the undergraduate level. Right. You know? So we said, uh, let's try to you know, explore possibilities for doing this. But it was a very abstract discussion, mm -hmm. just walking around, going for walks on the beach and talking about it now. Okay. But uh, then we got uh, one of Seshadri's close friends, Mr. Patsari, who is mm -hmm. unfortunately no more. Mm -hmm. They were sort of friends through music. I he see. was a great music enthusiast and his wife uh, was, is a very good Veena player. No? I see. So then he had joined the Spix Science Foundation. He was one of the creators. Okay. He headed the energy division and they had a chemistry division. And then he said, why don't you guys come and join us and do something in mathematics, computer science? Because SPIC, uh, not Science Foundation as such, but the vice chairman of SPIC, uh, Mr. A.C. Mutea, uh -huh. he was also managing an engineering college I see. in uh, Chennai. Uh -huh. And then uh, he was very interested in education. So, right. he heard, so we went and met him and Mutea was again very welcoming. And he said, uh, if you guys come and want to start something in education, yeah. know, undergraduate education, that will be fine with me. Yeah. And if you can, in return, help out with this Venkateshwar Engineering College, you know, keep an eye mm -hmm. on it and see what, how we can make things better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. Mm -hmm. We decided to take a plunge and again, it was a very fragile looking operation, yeah. you know, because it was private, you know, yes. and we had absolutely no possibility of getting any kind of recognition for an undergraduate program. Right. Uh, but we said, anyway, uh, we'll take a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. We went there and... Uh, we moved some of our PhD students there mm -hmm. and came, you know, Balaji, Nagan, mm -hmm. they were all PhD students. Mm -hmm. They took a chance, you know, when we came yes, of course. to do this. And to get a, a degree from a university which is not Even a was, I had to send Madhavan to Denmark to my friends in Madhavan's <laughs> university. And they were wonderful. You know, they said, let him come for one semester, we will, you know, yeah. uh, co-supervisor with a friend of mine and he got his PhD from there. Yeah. So, so that, we, that sort of thing is very critical for an institution which has, you know, no... No backing. And uh, then because of uh, Sishadri's uh, standing, we then tied up with Bits Pilani for a PhD program. Yeah. So even getting the PhD program going took some effort. Yeah. You know? And uh, then for the teaching program, it was it took us a long time yes. to find an uh, uh, institution which would recognize you know, our degree. Right. And uh, because we wanted to select our own students, mm -hmm. we wanted to design our yes. curriculum, yes. and we wanted to examine them ourselves. Yes, that's and that's. A lot of institutions, the universities we spoke to, we the, said we can even give you two out of these three, but not all three. You know? <laughs> There's no way that it will be permitted, no, under yes. our existing, yeah. no. But then, Mr. Uh, uh, Professor Dixit mm -hmm. from Madhya Pradesh uh, Open Boj Open University. Which also sounded co completely exotic and far away, you know. An open university in Madhya Pradesh. He came, we spoke to him, and he's wonderful. He said, If you guys want to do this, I'll give you recognition. You will do all these things, and then you send us the papers and the exam, you know, reports mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. and we'll grant it. Mm -hmm. So the, we were quite amazed, you know, it took quite a while yeah. uh, to do this. And uh, what I was even more amazed by was parents sending their kids to yes. join this undergraduate program yes. with the degree coming from an open university <laughs> in my reputation. No? They, because they, I think they had kids who were very good, very bright, yeah. but very keen on mathematics. Yes. And there were very few places in India they could go to to get an undergraduate education in mathematics. mathematics. And it was very clear they would get a good education mm -hmm. here because mm -hmm. they had come through the math Olympiad program and we had yes. people who said go there, you know, yes. they will teach you mathematics. So that's how we started. Mm -hmm. And uh, but to us, it was also very clear that 
mathematics is fine and it was important also because uh, the National Board for Higher Mathematics was going to provide funding. You know? and, uh, but at the same time it was very clear that it is extremely unreasonable to expect uh, an 18 year old kid to decide that he or she was going to be a professional mathematician. Yes. You find out much later. You know? yes, so there should be the course should have also other offerings and in particular the only thing we could think of in those days was computer science. Yes. So we offered, and that I think made it uh, much more attractive. Yes. You know? Yeah. Now you're attracting not from the math olympiad, but also the informatics olympiad as yeah, well. Yeah, and even for the students, yeah. you know, for even if you are mm -hmm. uh, very bright, mm -hmm. you have a lot of bright students. Yes. It was very clear. Only a handful was going to take to mathematics. Yes. Not because they are stupid, but they just found it very dry, abstract, yes. yeah. and not for me. Yeah. And for them, it was very important. Yes. To have an outlet. Yes. You know. To have an option, another to option. Have an option. Exactly. Yes. And in fact, that's what I would like to see, that, you know, yes. this place to, should stand for very high quality mathematics education for people who are mathematically inclined. But, but not necessarily do so mathematics. Exactly. And should be hardcore mathematicians. Area. Yes. Because my IT experience showed that, you know, look, uh, you come in and you get in a safe, protected environment, a demanding education. It doesn't matter what. Yeah. But after that, you can go out and do a lot of interesting things. Yes. And that should be the character of an undergraduate education. Absolutely. You know, you work people hard and you teach them things, but you don't expect them to become academics in your own image. No. Especially not pure mathematics. Yes. You know? yes. So, but anyway, so we started and uh, it took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were funding problems, but MBHM stepped in you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, more or less uh, took over, you know, which is uh, wonderful the right. support they right. provided. But unfortunately, I, a few years after we had started the undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. you know, we all took part in teaching. We got wonderful support from math science faculty. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, and then a lot of uh, retired faculty who knew Sishabri came right. in and taught. You know. right. So and because of all this, uh, the teaching program started to really take off. And especially yes. after the first batch, yeah. where they managed to get scholarships abroad. Yes. In, in, despite having a degree from... Yeah. That's an acid university. test. <laughs> Exactly, that's the acid test in India. That thing really took off. It was established, yeah. you know, yeah. as a very good undergraduate yeah. program, yeah. you know, yeah. in mathematics. So, but unfortunately, I had to leave for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Not leave, I thought I was going on a sabbatical. And I went to Georgia Tech on a two year sabbatical because I was getting tired also of uh, the theoretical work that I'd been doing. Okay. I thought enough is enough. I've been doing it since my PhD days, you know. Right. And then I thought I should do something, you know, I would like to do something. Not necessarily more practical, but with a more uh, experimental component. Okay. Which is also sort of a slightly broader, because I was working on very, very specialized, you know, okay. problems uh, with a very small community. Just to, so Georgia Tech I went to on yeah. uh, what I thought was going to be a two years back. Right. But uh, a year later, I got uh, sick of it because I was not doing any research. I was not doing any learning. I'd gone there to switch areas. I know? see. I was spending a lot of time managing projects, writing proposals, you know. Okay. So then uh, the, a friend of mine, he was the dean at the time in, uh, in the School of Computing at NUS. Mm -hmm. And when he found out that I was uh, unhappy, one of his colleagues was spending also a sabbatical at mm -hmm. Georgia Tech mm -hmm. in the same room. Then he said, why don't you come and spend uh, the second year here, you know? we'll support you. Mm -hmm. And even though I knew nothing about the domain, he said, we are interested in starting this domain in the right. systems. Right. And we'll support you. So I went there and uh, we were extremely, you know, I was very happy. Right. In the department, and my daughter, unfortunately, right. uh, we had moved her from here to the U.S. Uh -huh. She was very young at that time. Right. And then I disrupted her thing by again moving culturally uh, more than education. Right. It didn't matter. She was very young. Right. But culture, and I felt very bad. And I thought uh, we should stay put here because she liked the place, and it's a wonderful environment you know, right. for kids. You know? Yes. And uh, and I liked the department very much. Yeah. They were excellent, and, and India was very close. I yeah. could come here. Yeah very easily. We came some three, four times a year, yeah. you know, and I maintained my contact with uh, CMI. Yeah, uh, I, I remember when I was at NUS in the uh, mid-80s, I, I would, um, you know, uh, after after breakfast, I'd have breakfast, get on the plane and have lunch with my mother in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. was, I just couldn't do that in the U.S. And my daughter, when she became a teenager, she mm -hmm. would come back from parties at mm -hmm. one o'clock in the night. Of course, yeah. I would stay. Not, not a problem. No issue, yeah, not a problem. Yeah, my, my yeah. son used to take the bus, go to school. He was studying at uh, American uh, Singapore American School, and uh, you know, he was seven. 
And I didn't have to accompany him to the school. Exactly. And she would come back. I would, of course, stay up with yeah, my father. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you felt completely yeah. safe. And the department, as I said, uh, it was yeah. uh, basically a teaching institution, yeah. you know, trying to become a U.S. private university yeah. style you know, research university. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they made the transition in front of my eyes yeah. for a period of 14, 15 yeah. years. You know? yeah. uh, it was remarkable. Yeah. So I enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. So I stayed put, but uh, maintained contacts with CMI, mm -hmm. kept uh, serving on the governing council. Right. And I've always been a well-wisher, you know, yeah. uh, trying to spend as much time as possible. I still work with Madhu. Right. There is joint research. Right. Company, you know? And of course, Sishadri, we maintain right. Uh, right. very close contact. You know? So where would you like to see uh, CMI go, say, next decade, two decades? Next decade, I would like the intake per year to be around 200 students of the same quality, okay. but not taken in as to do a, pro, a BSc degree in mathematics. Okay. Uh, certainly a fraction of them, those who are inclined, should do mathematics, mm -hmm. but I would much rather be, it be a very strong undergraduate program in, in mathematical sciences. Well, for mathematical sciences, what? For so, for for instance, it would include computer science. Okay, of it course. It would include uh, uh, data science. Okay. Uh, say things like uh, uh, with a strong component of machine learning, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. statistics. How about things like bioinformatics? Absolutely. Econo bioinformatics, economics, mathematical economics, finance, finance. So these are the things, and of okay. course, there is physics already here. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, so, uh, though I think in physics, I would like to see things like biophysics and things tied to material science, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, solid state mm -hmm. physics, yes. applied physics, so right, to speak, you know, right, right. those things to grow. Right. Therefore, uh, you know, a bright student can come mm -hmm. and has a, 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 a reasonable amount of choice. Mm -hmm. And of course, with a strong background, core background, say about four or five courses in mathematics, yes. so that yes. you have a solid footing. Quantitative you background. Launch yeah. Out, yeah and do any one of those things, mm -hmm. like IIT that you have some five or six mm -hmm. things to choose from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you graduate and you go out and do other. So, and secondly, I would like to see that this is not necessarily a place for producing PhDs. Okay. That these are undergraduates mm -hmm. who are given a very solid education, mm -hmm. but then they go out and do various things. Yep. It could be anything. It could be in business, it could be in academics, it could be, you know. This is what I would like to see. But of course, the, a suitable expansion in faculty mm -hmm. and infrastructure, mm -hmm. The, Most the, importantly, committed to mm -hmm. a strong undergraduate program. One of the things I see is that you know you you can you might be able to get the students, but then you have to have enough competent faculty to teach Absolutely. that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, that that becomes more complicated. Yeah, and especially if uh, I think the character of this place would be lost if we focused only on teaching. Yes. And so, if you compromise too much on. Uh, hiring people yes. simply because they can teach the courses that need to be taught yes. desperately. Yeah. Then over a period of time, I think the culture, you know, because I think the culture still here is research is important. Very much so. You, you, and Very that much. should be maintained. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you don't have to produce female to listen yeah. well on it, yeah. but you must have faculty who are committed to research. Yes. You know? yes. And I agree with you, that is going to be difficult. Yeah. But my theory is that uh -huh. if uh, people uh, come to a place, tend to come to a place especially if they have been exposed to the U.S. style universities, yes. Yes. they are happy to come to a place where there are very good students. Yes, In uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Because that makes the whole thing a lot more pleasant, you know, yes. and yes. a lot more attractive, and you have always had the choice of, the chance of some of them staying back to do at least a yes. master's to start with, yes. and then that in turn attracting other good PhD students. As we know, you know, good students always ask good questions. Yeah, exactly. So, that's that's a very important. And you learn a lot by teaching. Yes, absolutely. And you can't do research full time, no. Yes. And so because of that, I'm hopeful that you can under uh, institutions' reputation matters. Yes. And absolutely. so with CMI, with its growing reputation, I feel one will be able to attract uh, the required faculty slowly. No, you yes. can't do it overnight. Yes. Slowly, but provided there is some assurance. Yes. That uh, the infrastructure will be there, yes. and most importantly, basic. Uh, funding. funding will be yes. there, you know. Yes. And uh, I mean, given the current situation in India, that should, in principle, that shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. You no, know, there are yeah. uh, resources available. Yes. But so if that happens, I would love to see that happen to CMI. Okay. Great. Thank you.